Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Exotic Astrology. So today we will continue with the series of exhortations, the best signs for planets. Yes, we have already discussed about the sun, the moon and the planet of communication, Mercury. So who's next? <laughs> And yes, if you have not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe and click the notifications button so that you can keep getting emails when I upload new videos because I'm uploading them only for you to learn, uh, you to listen and for me to learn. <laughs> okay, so before beginning, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to Him. Yes, and He will be there. <laughs> so we discussed how Sun gets exalted in Aries, Moon gets exalted in Taurus, Mercury gets exalted in Virgo. Yes, if you have not watched it, then please go and watch it. Okay, otherwise you will not like this video. <laughs> So today we will discuss about three more planets that is Venus that, and the next is Jupiter and Saturn is not possible today we will discuss it some other time. Saturn, Venus and Mars okay because it is quite similar to explain these three planets exaltation. So where does Venus get exalted? Taurus, Libra. <laughs> no, Venus gets exalted in the last sign of the zodiac. There is nothing beyond this zodiac sign. It is the end. It is the sign of moksha, liberation. It is the sign of salvation. Freedom. Yes. It is the sign of Pisces. Why does Venus get its highest exaltation there? In the nakshatra of Revati, 28 degrees, 4th Pada. This requires a long explanation. I will tell you the mundane explanations which some astrologers give. But it is completely bogus. Maybe it is true to some extent. What I am going to say now, maybe that is true to some extent. But that is definitely not the explanation. I will tell you the real explanation. <laughs> now what is Pisces? Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac. Yes, 12th zodiac sign. So Pisces also represents the... 12th house which stands for comforts related to sleep okay bed pleasures how good your sleep is okay because when you are sleeping you are completely in you are fully absorbed no activity other than sleeping are we so much absorbed right now what some mundane astrologers uh, give their how their inter how they give the interpretation is that oh if venus is in pisces it is very good for sexual arenas okay and it is very good for luxuries because you are sleeping properly it means that you do not have tension in life okay that means you are very peaceful you are very calm okay and 12th house is also the also bed pleasures so they say or oh, you will be sexually very happy with your partner or with partners or whatever. You will have too many partners. Okay. This is complete nonsense. Maybe this is the reason. I mean, this can be one of the reasons. But this is not the main reason. I will tell you that. <clears throat> See, Venus is a very peculiar planet. Why? Because 
this planet actually has no friends okay we will discuss planetary friendships later but jupiter sun moon and mars are its natural enemies okay that means the sign of leo cancer Cap uh, aries scorpio sagittarius and pisces are its enemies okay hold on below hold on pisces also because these six are ruled by these four planets now the other two planets that is mercury and saturn are considered to be the friends of venus okay but actually is it true i mean that is true they are friends these three are very good friends jupiter uh, so venus mercury and saturn but is it actually helping venus what do you think well let's see what happens when venus and mercury are together or venus and saturn are together venus gets debilitated in the sign of virgo okay which is the sign of technicality as we discussed for mercury so mercury is definitely not a very good friend of venus and the gemini energy when mixed with venus when mercury venus are together venus is influenced by two zodiac signs one is virgo another is gemini because mercury rules virgo and gemini now the virgo aspect of venus makes venus suffer okay because venus behaves like mercury in relationships he becomes too much intellect uh, too much analytical too much critical about things okay critical about the partner which is not very conducive for a healthy relationship right and the gemina energy causes venus to jump from one partner to the another the gemina is that happy go lucky flamboyant prince which is just dancing and jumping and sitting in the pub and just enjoying and having a good time so although venus mercury conjunction people are very social but they have hard times in relationships because they have difficulty in sticking to one person this is what we have seen in our experience okay and apart from that you take saturn well saturn is a planet of delays disappointments <coughs> <coughs> struggles etc okay so whenever saturn is with venus it simply means that there are challenges in the path of relationships well now you may say every relationship has challenges but whenever saturn is with or aspecting venus there are significant challenges which you have to overcome because saturn is responsibility so that means the relationship can become more of a responsibility rather than being a source of your happiness and pleasure and fun okay which people don't like of course marriage is a responsibility there is no doubt about it but <clears throat> venus apart from marriage it also represents the bonding which is there between two people the love the romance the fun the happiness the joy so when venus is with saturn or aspected by saturn then it is seen in general that relationships become more of a responsibility a duty bound thing rather than being a source of pleasure and also you get married late sometimes okay or you may not get married at all <laughs> because saturn also shows the denials in life okay <clears throat> one of my relative has saturn and venus aspecting each other saturn is in capricorn venus is in the sign of cancer they are aspecting each other and she is not married she lost the desire to marry him <laughs> the current prime minister of in india narendra damodar das modi has saturn venus conjunct in his 10th house okay now this makes a person workaholic but 
the question to be asked is is venus actually happy there i don't think so <laughs> the only good thing about venus saturn is the person is bit realistic about relationships okay <clears throat> the person is bit practical down to earth okay but we will discuss about this later okay when we discuss saturn venus conjunction not now so inherently we see that none of the planets are really friends of venus okay <clears throat> but then why does it get exalted in its enemy's house pisces is the sign of jupiter right that shows venus the planet of happiness has traveled from aries up to aquarius then even to pisces and it has not found happiness unless it enters the last waters of pisces it will not find happiness what do you mean by that it simply means that unless you take to spirituality your internal happiness will not improve this parashara is telling not me <laughs> because pisces is the sign of spirituality what you become ultimately sagittarius is where you begin pisces is where you end okay and that is why many saints have had their venus exalted in pisces well if, if venus would only represent marriage then they would they should have had the best marriage ever but many of them are celibates and they are not married because they don't feel the need to marry because they are very much happy inside okay and to the degree you are happy inside to that degree you can give happiness if you are deficient inside if you are incomplete you cannot give happiness to your partner two incomplete people coming together will destroy each other two complete people coming together will uplift each other okay and that's how venus finds its exaltation in okay so materialistic pleasure will not satisfy you only spiritual happiness will satisfy you astrology proves it when lord krishna says in the gita that you will not find happiness in this world okay you have to go to god otherwise you may be happy you or venus may be in taurus or maybe it's in libra you will gain happiness but you will not find fulfillment there is def- difference between pleasure happiness and fulfillment fulfillment is the highest form of happiness okay you are satisfied inside nothing else is required so that's the meaning of venus exalted in pisces and when venus is in pisces the person becomes very selfless he is very much giving and then th- therefore it is very good to be in a friendship or in a relationship or any kind of partnership with such people they are because they are always in the mood of giving not in the mood of taking relationships cannot work without giving if you are only thinking of taking 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 it is not going to work we will discuss more about venus exalted in pisces later okay then who is the next planet let us discuss about mars okay Mars gets exalted where in the sign of Capricorn What is Mars Mars is that soldier that fiery energetic planet which wants to take action ruling the sign of Aries which is the first house of the zodiac and ruling Scorpio Scorpio is what it is the 8th house okay Scorpio rules all the hidden things Mars is the surgeon because Scorpio is the sign of surgery okay 8th house is surgery and then what is capricorn capricorn is the sign of discipline it is the sign of saturn the own sign which is not the moon trigon sign moon trigon sign is aquarius if you do not know what is moon trigon sign please go and watch the video okay <coughs> and now you bring this fiery hot energetic planet into this sign of work what happens see basically capricorn 
represents a field okay where somebody is working it also represents forest but it also represents a ground where things are happening that is why people say na show me the thing in the ground in hindi we say zameen mein kya hai dikhao whatever you are speaking should manifest in the ground by your actions otherwise it is not of much value yes or it is considered to be of not of much great value i suppose so because of that when you put this soldier into the sign of discipline and work there it becomes exalted it could have been exalted in its own sign aries mars in aries is a very impulsive mars it is a good mars but it is very impulsive it will do and then think but capricorn it's not like that it will first think and then it will do okay mars is fabulous in the sign of capricorn and then ultimately capricorn is the sign of work so soldier has lot of energy he has to put it into work okay and the soldier can work for long time and capricorn is the sign which shows working for long okay and it is very straight forward sign because say soldier is very straight forward people at your workplace are very straight forward they are not like your mother or father or your wife or your husband talking well, i like this do you like this no if you like it then that's it if the work is right that's it if it is not right do it again <laughs> soldier does not like to be emotional in the sign of cancer where opposite of capricorn where it gets debilitated so that is why mars gets exalted in capricorn so these people who have mars in capricorn some of the friends who i know personally they are very disciplined okay either it's a boy or a girl they are very disciplined okay they don't only want to take actions their actions are consistent and long term and they will finish anything because the soldier goes to kill and he kills and comes back okay so <clears throat> that means the soldier is getting the place to exert itself fully there is no other sign the zodiac belt where it can do this because you might think oh aquarius is a better sign maybe for mars to find its exaltation but no because aquarius represents leaders of the society who try to bring in change into the society okay aquarius people don't do capricorn are the people who are working okay aquarius is representing those classes of people who have achieved a certain level of post position name and fame okay and they are working to change the society improve the society but they more uh, they they are more of supervisors than <coughs> people who implement things okay and people who work actually are the people ruled by capricorn okay so if your mars is placed in capricorn you are extremely fortunate okay and it, these people are known as go getters anything you tell them they'll just go and get it they'll just go and do it finished that's it <laughs> and lastly i will want to talk about jupiter today okay Jupiter finds its highest exaltation in 5 degrees of Cancer in Pushya Nakshatra's first pada okay now what is Jupiter Jupiter represents your gurus your counselors your guides your teachers preachers anybody who gives you shelter not the kind of shelter sun gives you sun is more of the physical shelter jupiter is more of the shelter in terms of get giving you direction in life sun is also the significator of light surya but jupiter here signifies spiritual light okay both jupiter and sun signify spirituality and astrology is primarily signified by the sun <coughs> okay jyotisha jyoti that leads you to ishwara which is god okay that is the meaning of jyotish 
astrology and jyotish are quite different we will discuss what is the difference later okay so why does the planet of <coughs> spirituality get exalted in the sign of home mother emotions <coughs> see i will explain this to you through the bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita lord krishna bhagavad gita is what the holy book of the vedic tradition of the hindus okay i can explain it through other books also but here the stepwise progression is that it becomes very easy to explain i will discuss more on this when i discuss the uh, placement of jupiter in cancer later okay but as of now as a short introduction <coughs> lord krishna talks about spirituality at different levels okay for example the first level lord krishna talks is you are you are not practicing any spirituality okay maybe you are an atheist or you just don't believe in god and you don't have any concrete spiritual practice into your life okay <coughs> that is the meaning of jupiter in capricorn okay because in capricorn jupiter gets debilitated where mars gets exalted okay <coughs> because capricorn is the sign of it is the 10th house okay and people generally don't like to work so jupiter in capricorn means does not mean the person is not religious it means the person is just doing things just as a formality maybe he is chanting some mantra he is going to the mosque or he is going to the church but just as a formality he is doing because 10th house is the house of formality it is the house of uh it is the house of uh, what you say actions which you do regardless of you like it or you don't okay so in these situations it is very difficult to sustain your spiritual practice for a long time jupiter and capricorn because if you do not like what you are doing spiritually well you will very soon leave it you don't believe me try it <laughs> because there are so many allurements in this world who will try to deviate you from your path and if you are not having as lord krishna says in the gita param drishtu anivartate the higher taste higher taste where in your spiritual practice the happiness that you get while practicing your spiritual duties should be higher than the happiness you get when you practice your mundane duties because then mundane things of this world materialistic things <coughs> cannot pull you down they cannot bring you down okay otherwise you will be left without anything you will leave your spiritual path okay so jupiter in capricorn basically means a beginner in spirituality he just doing things without much love <clears throat> and then you come to the sign of jupiter in pisces okay which is its own sign <clears throat> what is pisces pisces is the sign of charity giving giving things okay <clears throat> having faith in god god or even if not god um, that is the system of <coughs> karma yoga which lord krishna talks about karma yoga is what <coughs> working with detachment yes that is a very high stage so don't expect results from your work you work not that you do not expect results but don't get attached to the results okay today i have got 100 out of 100 in mathematics so i am happy but what if tomorrow i get 40 then i am miserable right of course if you get 40 you should try to improve it it is not a sign of uh, laziness okay anyways what can you do it's all up to destiny <coughs> this is complete nonsense but you try to improve your results okay but don't get attached to that Okay, why did I not get ninety? I will this time. I will make it ninety, or else I will not be happy. No, if you, you give your full effort, and if you get ninety or hundred, that's fabulous. If you don't, then it's okay. So that is the meaning of Jupiter in Pisces. It is signifying 
karma yoga karma yoga means acting in a way without wanting the results or without not without wanting the result without uh, being too much attached to knowing what will happen okay or being too much attached to the results okay <clears throat> because pisces does not think much okay about the outcome because venus gets exalted there so when you are giving something to somebody don't expect things in return because then you will be frustrated because expectation is the sign of virgo expectation is represented by the sign virgo so that is why virgo people can be much frustrated at times because they might always be expecting things from people in return that is why venus gets debilitated venus is if venus is in virgo if they give you something they will always expect something in return but venus in pisces will not expect so that is why they are very happy and virgo people are miserable okay now oh, again i mean depending on the placement of other planets so if your sun or moon is placed in virgo i don't take it this way that virgo people are miserable <clears throat> they will only be miserable if they do not purify that trait which they have in them expecting things from others okay so that jupiter in pisces is equal to karma yoga and then above that is gyan yoga lord krishna says gyan yoga is <coughs> gyan yoga is also the sign of reading the scriptures going very deep into scriptural study going close towards god okay <coughs> understanding what god is understanding the elements the tattvas different energies how the world is functioning who is controlling this world <coughs> that is like jupiter in the sign of sagittarius okay sagittarius is the mool trikon sign of jupiter it's very powerful there <coughs> because it is the sign of philosophy debate higher discussion discussion on abstract topics discussion about god discussion about spirituality higher wisdom discussion with your gurus your guru himself okay so basically that is gyan yoga gyan means knowledge okay when knowledge is your prime focus in life what which knowledge knowledge of astrology knowledge of nanotechnology no knowledge of god okay but there is another level which is talked in the gita that is bhakti yoga what is bhakti yoga bhakti yoga is connecting to god emotionally not sentimentally not sentimentally it is not sentimental it is see bhakti yoga is the highest that's what krishna talks because krishna says in the gita yogi naam api sarvesha madgate na antaratmana shraddhavan bhajate yo maam samay yukta tamo mata means that one who is always thinking of me is constantly in me and in union with me when do you think of a person non stop only when you love the person right love means you are emotionally connected to that person otherwise it is not love the mother is always thinking of her child what the child is doing is he or she dancing sitting eating crying sleeping the child is always in the mind of the mother why because the mother loves the child the boy 16 year old boy goes and gives a beautiful rose i will show you a beautiful rose beautiful red rose <laughs> these are dead roses by the way <laughs> or you can give a big rose like this this is a big rose <laughs> or you can give green colored flowers to the girl he goes and gives this because he loves her right he is always thinking oh today i will give her this tomorrow i will give her that he is obsessed similarly the girl is thinking oh if he comes i will make cards for him i will give him this i will give him that okay <clears throat> so krishna tells in the gita that always think of me become my devotee and by this way you will obtain me yes 
so unless you are emotionally connected to god you feel emotions for god you can't be happy in spirituality you can start and you can try and eventually you have to come to this stage and this is not my philosophy this is the philosophy of the gita and krishna says bhakti mayam param kritwa that only through bhakti can you understand me bhakti means one who has devotion one who has love for god because in india there there was a great saint named mirabai so there's a very famous song where it says i see lagi lagan mira ho gayi magan okay which means that what an attachment she had towards god that she became fully absorbed and we will discuss more on bhakti yoga later but as of now exaltation signs of jupiter and other planets i'm just saying that why does jupiter gets exalted in cancer of course there are many mundane mundane interpretations that oh your mother is the first guru okay because jupiter is guru and cancer is the mother those are all true but i'm giving you a very high level of interpretation first is either you are an atheist or you don't believe or you are doing some official practice which is the lowest okay jupiter and capricorn then you are karma yogi okay jupiter in pisces where you are doing things but without expecting much in return at the same time you don't have much of god in the picture god comes more into the picture when jupiter goes into sagittarius okay because that is the sign of discussion about god and spirituality and abstract topics which is gyan yoga okay gyan is that gyan which is meditating and discussing with other people the scriptures the knowledge of the scriptures okay which is very important because tamasoma jyotir gamaya mrityur ma sat gamaya that says please lead me to light and then ultimately when you become too much absorbed in god in the playful past times of god which he had performed okay as ram as krishna or when you read the bible you will know the different stories of the saints and the sages then you emotionally try to connect with them when you see i will show you this when you see this beautiful form of lord krishna uh, what he is doing he is eating butter <laughs> so at that time you also feel oh krishna you are so beautiful i wish i could be with you yes that obsession comes after some time which is the best part so unless you are connected to god emotionally and we will discuss about bhakti yoga later okay nine nine processes of how to connect to god that is the main agenda of this channel <laughs> not to discuss when you will get married or when you will have a job okay so that is how venus uh, gets exalted in pisces jupiter gets exalted in cancer and mars gets exalted in capricorn and jupiter mars are friends but they get exalted in the opposite signs and also debilitated in the opposite signs okay because mars the planet of action does not like emotions okay it collapses completely because the moment it wants to do something it is overwhelmed by emotions in cancer we will discuss about mars in cancer and jupiter in capricorn when we discuss the videos of debilitation okay so until next time if you have not yet subscribed subscribe to it and we will discuss the exaltation of saturn and we will discuss about rahu and ketu also where they do good where they don't do very good and why okay so until next time bye bye see you take care okay